Hello, everybody, and good morning, good evening, good night from wherever you are. My name is Matt, and uh, I am talking to you from Ningbo, China. This is the uh, Jio Travel Show, um, where I try to touch on topics of people who um, like to travel, like to move around the world. Um, in uh, this case, actually, I am going to be talking to an old friend of mine who uh, some of you may know. We were actually just talking off off uh, in, in the beginning of this, uh, if, uh, oh, before I keep going, say hi, Eva, to the camera right here, say hi. hi. Eva is uh, going to be playing on her iPad while we, <laughs> while we have a, a, a nice discussion of, of life and, and, and travel. This uh, stream is playing on my uh, Facebook, so if you're coming from Facebook, hello, and uh, if you're coming from YouTube, Hello as well. The Jio Nation is uh, uh, playing this episode on both sides. Because I'm in China, um, I'm streaming without my VPN. Uh, some of you may not even understand what that means. It basically means that uh, I cannot play YouTube videos. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I cannot play YouTube videos while we're doing the stream because uh, it's off of the VPN. So bear with me but I think that the best quality you're gonna get is this. Uh, one more note before I uh, bring Matt on. Um, the uh, I, I think this will be a, a question and answer rich uh, episode. Uh, Matt has a very interesting history of, uh, of, of travel and exploration uh, of himself and the world. Well, himself, well, you know, we'll, we'll figure out more about his self uh, explorations in a little bit, but uh, um, so put your questions in the comment section if you uh, if you'd like. You can make super chats as well, and we can go through those and uh, and we can have a lively discussion. So, without further ado, uh, welcome to the Jio Travel Show. Okay, so like I said, my buddy Matt is uh, is a is a world traveler. He's been traveling for a long time. Um, Eva is oh yeah, you want to put mustard on that hot dog? There you go. Um, and so we are uh, we're gonna bring him on. We're gonna we're gonna talk together and we're gonna share some of his life journey. And uh, without further ado, here he is. Hey, what's up? Hello. <laughs> Uh, uh, first off, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Say hello. Hello, my name is Matt Matthew <laughs> Frazier. What, what, what do they What do they call us? Matt? Just Matt Two, right? I think that's Matt Squared. Matt, Matt Squared, maybe. No, no, they refer to me on your channel just as Matt Two. Matt Number Two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Matt Frazier, anyways, um, from Las Vegas, Nevada. <clears throat> uh, I've lived here for twenty years. I was born in L.A. I grew up in Southern Arizona, and I've lived in Las Vegas off and on for the last 20 some odd years. So I'm basically a very Southwest America born and raised. I'm a desert boy. Okay. Sounds good. That's a, that's good enough. <laughs> and uh, if you, if, if it's really hard for you to tell, I mean, we are basically sp spitting images of each other. So if you can't tell us apart, I'm over on this side and then he, he's over, he's over on that side. So just, just in case I, I know we wait, both wait, have, wait. How do, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to find you on the, my map. Huh? Uh, my, my map back there. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah, trying, yeah. I'm trying the to map. like, yeah, trying to point at it. Anyway, yeah. Right. Where am I? I am, uh, I am way, way over to the right. Um, this is a map that sits behind Matt's head. And if you can look, it's a little bit hard to tell, but um, each point on this map are places that Matt has been, and he's been a lot of places. How many countries you've been, Matt? Somewhere in the sixties. In the sixties, mm -hmm. well, and and not not just like airport journeys. We were talking no, about no, no, actual no. places. If, you've if been. you wanted to count like layovers, closer to like eighty, ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you count layovers and never leaving the airport type of thing. And. Uh, how did how did we uh, how did we meet? How did we find each other? <clears throat> we had a mutual friend. Um, back in two thousand and two, two thousand three, when I was living in Las Vegas, which I still do, but I was like when I first moved there, I had a roommate. Um, we, we were always good friends. Life went on. We split apart, and then I started traveling. And then I guess he knew you from Vegas also after after we moved after he moved out, mm -hmm. and. I had just got back from my six, my first six month trip around the world. 
and Justin like I like, linked us together on Facebook and said, Matt, you should meet Matt. Blah, blah. And, I'm the, and I think the very no, I know the first thing I I messaged you or put on your uh, page was why are all the travelers named Matt? Because there's like <laughs> there's like nomadic Matt, and so that was the first What's introduction that? to you. What's a dancing mat? Isn't there isn't there a mat that dances in different yeah, countries? Yeah, his, no, his name was Matt. Right, right. He did, and he went on that commercial where, um, yeah, I mean, like he, he just is, he just yeah, yeah. His name was Matt. Yeah, his yeah, name yeah, was yeah. Matt. Also, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we we are, we are of good company, right? All right, yeah. And so uh, we started talking, and uh, as I was kind of uh, working on, oh, nice hat, by the way. Uh, that is the OG. That is first, the OG. That is the OG. That is an OG <laughs> Jayo hat. <laughs> I gave it to him as it started falling apart because I I was afraid that that hat was going to end up on the side of the road because it was just going to be like torn apart. And I'm like, before it tears apart, I'm going to give it to a friend who will take good care of it. And uh, and so uh, so Matt has has and hair and the shirt. Is that and the shirt it. you bought off the website? Yeah, 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 that's the shirt. I love the shirt. Like I, I'm not just saying that because it's you. It's like, the material. It's like that stretchy. Yeah, so it's like it fits good. It fits, it's a it's a good fitting shirt. If you guys go to the link I just uh, put in there, jayo.com, you can go to the store there and you can buy the shirt that uh, Matt is wearing. You obviously can't buy the hat, but you can buy the shirt. You want to know something funny? You want to know something funny? I just found out a couple of days ago. Oh, don't do, don't buy apps, honey. Don't buy even if you think they're free. They're not free. <clears throat> oh, that's my daughter, by the way. Let me let me because because we're on split screen here. Yeah, Eva, say hi again to everybody that just joined. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> anyways, um, I just found out, Matt, that I would I went to because all of my stuff on that store is made called POD, print on demand. Basically, you send a design to a factory, they make they make it, and then they send it to the uh to whoever buys it, send it to you, right? And um I configured all the money and everything and the pricing, and it turns out that I configured the pricing wrong and I, I shouldn't say this because if you buy a shirt from that store right now, some of them, I'll actually have to pay you to take them. <laughs> like, like the configuration is, is like a dollar or 50 cents lower than the cost, higher than the cost. So I actually am, I'm, I'm actually paying people to wear Jayo stuff, <laughs> which is, which is sort of counter to having a store on your website. I'm actually losing money every time somebody buys yeah. something. You need, where's your 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 financier? <laughs> I need I need some help. I need right. some help. Like that is a that is a dumb thing to do. Anyway, I'm looking. I'm like, holy shit! Why does this say I have to pay three dollars for this shirt? <laughs> like, because international, because they don't have that sliding scale international. I just put flat shipping, so the some of them ship different places, and I'm like, holy shit! I had to pay. I had to pay. So you're welcome. Basically, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, stuff. yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. So, um, everybody's talking about your hair. How long did you grow? How long did you start uh, growing uh, your hair out? I mean, when did this? Uh, it never was a plan. For all, for all, for all intensive purposes, uh, Jesus hair. When did that start? start uh, it coming wasn't into a, play. It wasn't a plan. I, I'll, I'll give you the short version. If you want me to expand on it, I will. The shorter version <laughs> is I started growing it like. The last time I got a haircut, haircut where like I had them take length off was probably a year and a half to two years, two years ago, about two years ago. It was a like cut, cut was the last one. So I guess since then. Holy moly, that's a long time. Yeah, I I wouldn't be able to do that. It just simply wouldn't well, be able to do that. Well, that was part of this. The longer part of the story. So yeah, I mean, well, you know, uh, just to let you know, Matt and I, when we're together. We will go off on tangents that will, they'll be interesting tangents, but you might never come back to the original conversation. And, and you know what? That might be a good thing. <laughs> it depends on what you're looking for. But uh, you're not, I think you're that's not a gonna get a, a good friendship. Yeah, you're not going to get a, a host type of conversation from me. Like, I, this is the first time I've done it in one of these. I don't, I, I, I'm retired. So, like, I don't, I don't have those, those what's, what's the, what's the big thing now that everyone does for work? What's it called? All the, like the Brady Bunch photos, everyone's, what's the thing where everyone's working now? Online where they have, someone knows. What are you talking about? Zoom, <laughs> zoom, zoom. Zoom, so zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, zoom like, meetings. I don't do any meetings. of that stuff. Like this, so this is very weird to me. Not weird, but 
I'm just sitting in my living room and talking to you. And that's all that I, I, I don't, I don't know. Is there a cadence I needed to follow in order to have a, a podcast? <laughs> no, honestly, you know, you know, what's interesting. I'm going to go off on a slight tangent Then we'll go back to the hair tangent. Um, my videos have gotten longer and longer. And it used to be that you'd ha really had to compartmentalize a video to get people to watch it. Like it had to be under 10 minutes and ideally like, the only reason you hit 10 minutes is because YouTube really likes that. But honestly, like four minutes or three minutes is okay. But my videos I've been letting go really long. And I think we're in a weird period of time to where if you wanted to have long conversations or if you really wanted to go just, you could make a five hour live stream as long as it's interesting, mm -hmm. then uh, no thanks. Man. Don't don't buy that. Then, then you can do that, you know? And people are more prone because they've been sitting in their home on whatever lockdown they're in. And, uh, and they can... What, just go back to this one. Oh, this one is, I can't figure that one out, honey. Uh, anyways, <laughs> sorry about that. Just pick another one, race, racing game or something. Annie is still sleeping. She wanted to catch up on an extra half hour. So Eva will uh, be here until then. But uh, anyways, um, see, that was a tangent. Back to your hair, though. So... Yeah, so anyways... Ahead, um, You're back. <laughs> the the longer-ish version it would be... This was around the time where I had just got back from living on the Gillies. No, I'd been back for about six months from living on the Gillies, and I didn't know what, honestly, it was the most limbo I've ever been in, at least in the last decade or two. Like, I didn't, I wasn't like, like, like oh no, scared. I just, I didn't know what to do, where to go, should I travel in? Then I got my dog, so I didn't know. And during all that, just not really having to, a clear idea what I'm doing. My hair just kept on growing and growing, and and I've been I've been going gray since I was 25. And once it got to like around my ear length, I started noticing like the salt and pepper look. So like let's I'm mm. nothing else. I'm not doing anything. I don't have like I, I don't I don't socialize. I'm not traveling. So let me just let it because I used to cut it because I wanted to look younger. Because when you're traveling, when you're older, it's not as easy to socialize. So <laughs> yeah. so I yeah. I would always want to stay young. So I'd be like clean shaven and short hair, but since I stopped long-term traveling, I just said, screw it. You sort of paint yourself as the wise traveler inst instead of the party animal young guy that you can kind of <laughs> have I think a romp I, with. I think unconsciously, that's a big part of the reason why I have kind of brought on this new look is because I do want to separate myself from how I was in the twenties. Not ashamed. Yeah. But I just, I'm, I'm just not that person at all anymore. And I don't want people who knew me then to think of me that same way. So. Mm. Uh, let's, let's put a little context to you because I, I don't know. Uh, let me ask this question, actually. Matt and I were talking about this before we started. We said, um, I wonder how many people here know you like from my previous videos, because I mean, if you are, um, if you are uh, new here, there's a bunch of videos. If you go on YouTube right now and you pl plug it, not right now, when we're finished talking, <laughs> if you go on YouTube and you plug in his name, uh, F-R-A-S-E-R, Frazier and Jayo, you'll come up with a whole bunch of videos where we're together. There's videos of uh, when we met in, uh, in um, I think that one is Story of How I Almost Died. That was Vang Vien, right? When you met me for... Yeah, the first one was, this, was Nepal, though. Yeah, the first one is Nepal. When we when we met um, in our expedition for Everest, I actually have a uh, um, let's see here. I actually have a uh, picture of of that where we can talk. So this is on, you on the streets of Kathmandu when we were walking around and uh, we were buying some backpacks. You were what was that story? You you ended up finding a backpack there, right? No. You were trying on a backpack. You were trying on my backpacks. Your backpack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were we were looking for packs in order for me to go up Everest. And Matt was like, I mean, I, I can't remember. Did you, you called me and said, would you, I, I'd like to come up and see you go off for, for Everest, right? Or was that something I asked no, you? Or? No, no, no. Because when I first went to Nimble, the first time we met in person, mm -hmm. um, you 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 had kind of had this planned out. Of course, you had your accident and it kind of derailed everything. But yeah. Everest was still on the radar then. And yeah. So that was always like that was always you know the time was coming. That, and I was and I was living in Indonesia at that time, and mm -hmm. I had it. And 
you know, the time came for you and you're out there, it was time for you to, to go. And I just happened to have to do a, a, a visa run at that time. That's right. And I'm like, well, it's a perfect, you know, be better than going, because I would just normally go to Singapore, sleep in the airport and just come back. But now yeah. I have a reason to go. I've never been in Nepal. I get to see you off. So that's perfect. And that's what I did. Yeah. For those of you that don't know and don't do international travel very much, the, uh, uh, if you live in certain countries, you have to, uh, you only have a certain amount of, you can't stay in a country forever unless you renew a visa and kind of keep up this document in your passport. <laughs> what are you doing, honey? That allows you to uh, stay in the country. So, uh, every he, he uh, how long did you stay consecutively? When I say consecutively, I mean renewing visas, renewing visa. How long were you in Bali? The way it worked in the first year I was there was I would you, you have two months, of, technically two months, to stay in the country. But every month yeah. you still had to extend it. But you had to leave. You have to leave the country every two months. And yeah. I was there for a year, so that's you know five or six times a year. The second time when I came back, when I actually started working as a dive instructor, I got a social visa. So that was okay. good for six months. So the sec so my second year, I only let, had to leave like three times. But the first year, like six, seven. Isn't it nice when you get that one long visa? Like I remember doing China for like 30 days, then 60 days. I was like, oh, 60 days, nice. And then I got my first like one year. When you didn't have to worry about it for a year, you're like, holy shit. Well, I can really stretch out and well, relax me, now. I kind of, it kind of gave me a reason. It made me lazier. It gave me a reason not to travel anywhere. I stayed on Indonesia my second year for the whole entire year. Like I didn't even go anywhere. And that for me, if I would have had to do a, a visa run, I would have went somewhere because I had to leave anyways. So yeah, yeah. in that sense, it was a negative because it kept me in Indonesia, but it was more practical and was cheaper. So do you think that you would have um, almost died if you didn't come and visit me in, uh, in Nepal? Do you think that you got it via the transiting to, uh, I, I, I mean, I for sure got it in, in, it was either, it was either Gili air. Well, it doesn't matter. You have, if you don't know the islands, I was on the Gili islands and I was I was 100% fine, and it takes, I mean, it could take up to a week for it to affect you, but it, it certainly takes more than 12 hours. And I was, hmm. only, I was only in Nepal for less than 24 hours before when it hit me. So, and when I was in Nepal, what, we just, I went from the airport to the cab to the hotel. Like I, I wasn't even around, I wasn't even around mosquitoes. So yeah. I 100% got it in the ghillies. Yeah. And then it hit me. Once I got to Nepal. Now, you might not know what we're referring to. Matt came to visit me just before I left on the Everest uh, expedition. And um, he was just there to kind of hang out in Kathmandu and then, and then see me off uh, on my mountain adventure. <laughs> I mean, it only started to hit you like the like just the day, day and a half, right? Before we, two well, days probably. Yeah, that, before first, I left. The first night, remember the first night we went to go eat at your friend's house. Made that yeah, wonderful dinner. Yeah. yeah I yeah. wasn't you thought it was the dinner for a while, well, right? Well, no, no, no. I no, the remember beards. when we got back to the hotel, we had a couple drinks at the bar. Yeah, yeah. And when I say couple, I literally mean couple. We had like two. Yeah, yeah, it was. We weren't getting so, sloshed. Yeah, and then I I worked out before we went to go eat. And right, that's, I that's, remember. That's important for uh, that's and that's an important thing to yeah. mention because when we woke up the next morning, my muscles were so sore, like 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 sore sore, like working out type of sore, and yeah. my head was pounding, and I figured the soreness was from me working out the day before, and um, the headache. I thought I was hungover, but I'll, it didn't make sense because I work out a lot. I shouldn't be this sore, and I only had two drinks. I shouldn't have a headache. I just, I chalked it up to being old. And then we started walking and, I, and we started walking in the city. I'm like, it, like all hangovers do, it'll wear off. It only yeah. kept on getting worse. Turns out you had dengue fever yeah. and typhoid together. Yeah. Which, <laughs> jai to that. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to do it, <laughs> you do it right, man. Do it right. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny is I didn't put that picture of you in that hospital bed in the in the back end. I should have I should have found that picture, but 
I mean, you were on death's door, man, right? Dude, I, what? I mean, I, you yeah. don't, I don't even know how much because whenever I go back, well, it's not every time, but this last time specifically, when I went back to the Gillies and I was just, you know, talking to old friends, one of the, one of the, the ladies that, um, lived on the Gillies. She was <clears throat> from England, but she had been there for like 30 years. She's like a mama Gilly. She was one of the ones that helped me out in the hospital. And cause she spoke Bahasa and I didn't. So she's did a lot of the communicating. Yeah. And, um, she was last time I was there, which is what, six months ago. She says, I don't think you realize how, how bad you were. Like you were really, the doctor was telling me he was getting frightened. Like they literally for all in all the hotels in Lombok, now, to all the hospitals in Lombok, they sent out like uh, uh, a notice to all the hospitals for all a, a positive blood type because they thought they were going to have to do a blood transfusion on me. It was that bad. I mean, your blood was pooling in your feet, though, right? I mean, yeah, it was yeah. starting was, to pool. I was bleeding internally, yeah. Holy moly. Well, thank God it's just an anecdote, you know, a life, yeah. life anecdote, right? <laughs> No, yeah, exactly. It makes for a good story, but I'm glad it's a story that I can tell, not someone else tells for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Posthumously. There yeah, was yeah, once exactly. a man. He was a he was a good man. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so Matt has been a, a number of amazing places. Glad you're okay, Matt, from Karen. Oh, thank Abbott. you. Well, thank Matt, you. That's good. That's good. Uh, let's see here. Mick McCarthy. Ha ha. You're just sure that Matt Frazier's hair is not attached. to. Just make sure that <laughs> hat is not. Okay. That, that's not a goofy hat. That is literally no. hair and hat <laughs> separately, separately, not equal. <laughs> but uh, uh, we are uh, lucky to be sitting here listening to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I find that that a phrase what you're saying eve it goes uh beyond even matt because um there's a lot of people that we've lost over over the last little while i've lost a whole bunch and i'm i'm thinking you need to sit down and have conversations that that with the people that you really are are friends with and that you care about because you know you want to exchange as many stories as possible because you never know when uh when somebody's going to exit your life so so but matt and i have had uh, a number of amazing uh, interactions and things. Let's go through some, um, just kind of, just just spitball some of the things that we've done together. So uh, you came to China first, and you visited me in Ningbo, yep. which was cool. That was was that your first time in China? I yeah, because what at that point yeah. what I was, this was in two thousand fifteen or fourteen, fifteen, two thousand fifteen. Um, and I've been traveling at that point since 2013. It'd been about a year and a half. And what I was doing, yeah. I was I didn't I didn't purposely do this. It just ended up this way, and I just kind of halfway through it, I noticed that uh, what was, was happening. I just kind of just went with it. I was doing continents by continents, like I did New Zealand and Australia together. Then I I did all of Africa all at once for the most part, and then I did South Africa. So I kind of all right. I did I did Scandinavia. I did I did Europe. So. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do all of Asia together. I'm gonna start mm -hmm. in Beijing. I'm gonna start in Beijing and go down. And that was around the time that you and I became friends over over Facebook. And mm -hmm. and you and I told you or you saw it on Facebook, whatever, that I was going to and I didn't know where Nimble was. I didn't know I didn't know much about you at this point. Just just yeah. small, just small talk. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, you yeah. and you you let me know you're you're close to um Beijing. Did I say Bangkok before? Um uh, I, I think you said stuck. Bangkok. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Beijing. I start in Beijing. I was gonna go down, and and you let me know you're by Beijing, and you know when you get to you when you get to Nimbo, um, when you get to Shanghai, I'll let you know, blah blah blah. So that's what I did, and then I met you in Nimbo. And then here we are. That's yeah. cool. And how did you enjoy China? What were your what were your opinions of this China? Is what I, this is the first. I'm th I'll completely tell you, and this is a, completely from a a American tourist perspective. Um, so it's obviously, I don't know anything about the government. I, I mean, I know only thing I know is like what Matt has told me and what I lived through. So strictly on a tourist perspective. Uh, and at this point I has, I was a seasoned traveler. I had been to 40, 50 countries at this time. I've slept in everything from dirt on the. So I, I, I was, I wasn't a newbie. Mm. So, so I was a little bit cocky with that said. And what I tell people when they ask, about China, or if they ask, what's a difficult, most difficult place you travel to? I say China is the most difficult because I'm gonna tell you why though. 
When difficult, but don't you difficult on a negative thing. Difficult in the sense that, like, I honestly was naive enough to think that more people knew English than what they did. Really? That, yeah, I, I thought there was like half, because it's because it's an ed educated country. I just thought more people would know English. And I come to find out airports were about the only place where I was guaranteed someone's going to know English. Not only that, I couldn't even, like, in South America, even though I don't know Spanish well, I can at least, and the letters are, are um, what are they, Arabic or, or what's the, the, the type of lettering? Um, Far Farsi? Phonetic, no. phonetic. The, le Phonetic. the letters, they're, they're actual letters, so I can at least sound it out. And, like, mm, I know, mm, mm, mm. but there, there's no, I had no help. And it, cause I, was by, <laughs> I was traveling by myself. I, and Annie, remember when she saved me at the bus stop? Because I didn't know where I was supposed to go. And I sent her a text message and she had the photo. She told me where to go, what it said. So Annie saved me. Annie has so, saved so, me on a number of occasions too. <laughs> so, so the, uh, just the, the initial reaction is it's a very difficult country to travel through. Through, I think, not through, I th through, through. Mm. I, I, think I need to, I, I need to, I need, I, I need, because I might say that throughout the time. There's a difference between traveling to and traveling through. Traveling mm. to a China, China say you, you fly into Beijing, fly into Beijing, fly into Shanghai, you do that stuff. When I say travel through, I mean start at, say, the northeast point and and leave the southwest point and do it all by land, maybe a few airports here and there. So traveling through, it's difficult. Unless you know the language. And buses, right? Like, that was your... Yeah, the buses your... were rough because I didn't know... Like, there was, <laughs> people were trying to help me. It wasn't like they were mean or rude. It's just, I... It, it was hard. They don't know English and I can't read what I'm supposed to be reading. Yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. Hard. Do you think that it was sort of a lack of preparation because you kind of were? Oh, for sure. I just said that's why. I, that's why. That's why. That's why I prefaced it with I was cocky, and I yeah, and yeah, I did yeah, a lot yeah. of traveling yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dot your eyes and cross your T's before you go to China, yeah. <laughs> or know me and Annie. Yeah, that's yeah. a good recommendation. No, but I love like I honestly, and other like, other than the difficulty part, I have no negative thing to say. It was interesting though when. Because I only stayed in hostels. Every other country you go, every country I've ever been to, every hostel, at least 75%, if not 100% of the people in the hostel aren't from that country. In China, the other way around. Like 75% of the people were from China. There was a lot of Chinese travelers in hostels. Mm. I noticed that. That was a big thing I noticed. That's, that's different than around the world as far as hostels go. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a comment from uh, Michael Lacombe. Lacombe. I think it's probably in Lacombe, right, Michael? And he says, any new tattoos after the caves? Yes, I'm rushing your story. Now, he's he's helping us move the story along because he knows that we get long-winded first. But he doesn't realize that by bringing up the tattoos, you're actually bringing up a much <laughs> longer story <laughs> than, 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 than you could explain. So um, Matt has been on an adventure outward in the world but he's also been on an inward adventure you're uh, you've always been on an inward adventure and so combining the uh the philosophy life that you live and the outward traveling life you've laid the both to be bare on your skin right i mean it's kind of a combination of your they intertwine. outside they, life and your inside life it's tattoos definitely and there's so many layers because um I, before we get into that, just 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 uh, the cap, just the cap on on what you just okay. said. Okay. Um, in, during my traveling, I I say I get tired of it, but I, it goes to the territory, so it's not like I get tired of it. I wish people didn't because it's like I do the same. But I'm introducing myself constantly, telling the same story. I'm so and so. I'm from here. I'm so having tattoos like it 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 moves us forward so much further than the small talk. You know what I mean? So it, that's a big part of it is, is I mean, don't, I'm not saying I plan it this way, but it helps, it helps move conversations longer when I just meet someone. Well, let's have a conversation. Uh, do you, do you, do you know that song, uh, Lydia by, I think Kermit the Frog sang it, uh, uh, Lydia, the tattooed lady. Do you, do you know that song? No idea. Was, I may have heard Lydia, it as a kid. Oh, Lydia, remember. say, have you met Lydia? 
It's frozen. Yeah, through. Yeah, you're good. You're good. It'll do that from time to time. Um, so tell me a little bit about uh, your tattoo story. First of all, how many tattoos did you have, or how much of your body was tattooed as opposed to when you climbed uh, or you, when we did the cave adventure? As to now, how much when have I, you had? When I did, when I did the cave. I had like six old ones, like over a decade. And then on this new venture of mine, I, at that point I had, I think I had four and I'm, and one of them, the, this one was half done. So I had four and a half, I think at that time. But you just got a, you just got a new one. Can you show it to us or, or a little, the, the, the chest I, one? Oh, you want to start there? <laughs> I don't know if you want to start okay, there. Okay, okay. I don't care. I don't. I, this is your listen. If you wanted me to do it, 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 it's, it would be a two hour show. So you're going to have to give me some direction. Okay. Okay. Um, what's your favorite tattoo? I, I can't answer that, dude. Okay. Wait, hold on. Okay, <laughs> what's your fine, favorite country fine, to visit? Fine. Fine. Okay. <laughs> this is, I, I would say the one on my chest, but it's not finished yet. So I can't say that. So this would be my favorite right now, then. Bertrand Russell. Holy moly. Bertrand Russell. Okay. In outer space. And I don't and I mean if if, if someone really wants space. to know, I'll explain what this means. But if you know who Bertrand Russell is and yeah. you understand what the teapot analogy is, then you can if you want me to explain it, I will. If it's not not really big of a deal. But. I'll tell you what we're going to do here, Matt. You give us the a, the the uh, condensed version, and if people really, we could make a whole right. podcast about. Honestly, we'll call okay. it the Matt Tattoos Podcast. You know. All right, Bertrand Russell is like my favorite philosopher. Um, he pretty much, uh, he he did not obviously it wasn't he didn't single handedly change my life, but it was his his books and his outlook on life and way he explained things which made me, in hindsight, which was the catalyst that, that caused me to drift into the direction I, I ended up at now. And um, so that's I, his, he was known for logic and reason. Uh, instead, mm. of base, instead of basing your, your, instead of basing your, your beliefs and hopes and wants on your emotions and traditions and what your parents say or what are, what society says or what your teachers say or what anyone that is a superior to you says, then that's how I lived the first half of my life. Um, mm. And through reading him and, and, and watching, you know, many YouTube videos of things explained to him, he, he showed me how, or he, he pointed me to the directions I should say to learn how I could still have all of the all of the, the subjective beauty that things like religion and, and faith and things like that bring you. You can still have that with using logic and reason. I mean, it's it's not it's not one or the other. Mutually exclusive. Yeah. Right. And for me, it, I was always, you know, I thought I was that kid in high school that thought, you know, smart people were nerds and geeks and and um you know, I looked down. I mean, I was a teenage athlete kid, so mm -hmm. I was very religious, but it was based on being, uh, growing up in a small town, being young, relig religious mother. So I was brought up into it and I mm. was basically lived a life either, you know, you let faith guide you or you let logic and reason guide you. And I chose faith and things mm. happened in my life that made me, you know, delve into philosophy and Changing my life for the positive. I would not. I would not do that. Ninety percent of the stuff that I've done, which, which evolved into me being me. So, yeah. Me and uh, me and Matt. Me and Matt have had amazing, long-winded conversations. And one of the greatest things about traveling is actually having really interesting conversations with people that are yeah. that are traveling around the world. So that's I got to cool. plug my artist real fast. Her name. Yeah. yeah. Her, her name is Lindsay Staker. I think I say pronounce your last name. You spell but it, if, I'll type it into the comment section. Lind if you, on on say? YouTube, on YouTube, L N Z. She spells the L N Z. It's Lindsay. L N Z okay. ta Lindsay Tattoos. That's on Instagram. That's her best. It's very simple. Lindsay L Tattoos. 
Okay. LND okay. tattoos on Instagram. <sighs> I went ahead and shared that. So that's in the comment section. So cool. thank you, Lindsay. That's some good work you've done. So <laughs> and she didn't. And then my chest. And then, well, then I have, I mean, yeah. Okay. Like I, good said, that. I don't that's know if you cool. want to give me direction or whatever. You just want me to no, go ahead. This is great. This is great. What else I you got? got? I, then um, if anyone wants to ask any specific questions about any of the tattoos, just put them in there because I can go on forever about each one. Each, each tattoo to me, it's not like a corny. I mean, it's not like a meanie where you have to, you have to like un unpack it. I mean, I love Bertrand Russell and here he is. I love philosophy. Here he is. I, I love, I love his teapot analogy. And there it is. I like mushrooms. So there's a mushroom, another mushroom <laughs> there. All that. You together. mean, you mean mushroom soup, right? Like um, actually, course, you, you course, know, course. Yeah, a yeah. cream of mushroom and stuff like that. <laughs> and then my, I have a, my elbow cap is a brain, you know, it kind of makes sense, right? I have philosophy, um, psychedelics, the brain, then I have oh my famous favorite scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh yeah, Tyson That's Punch Out. And my dog Tyson. Where is Tyson? Uh, Tyson. We, we'll bring him in later. Yeah, he'll he's, yeah yeah he'll come. Um, Tyson is the cutest dog well, ever. So I have Tyson, Tyson, and Tyson. I have three Tysons on me. Is uh, and you have a power glove, right? Oh yeah. Then this is my Nintendo arm. What, what kind of started this huge, huge creative outflux of tattoos was this tattoo right here. This this is what started it. it I'm backwards, so it's hard for me to. Like, yeah, um, it's okay. This one right here. I'll, I'm, I'll be honest. With you, I don't know. If, I don't know who is into it on your who's watching right now, but. I am a pothead. I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> I'll be I'll throw that it's out legal. There. It's legal where you it's are. Legal. No big deal. And, and and I and I use the word pothead not as a not as a a demeaning type of of what's the word I'm looking for? I mean I, I I mean it in the most constructive, positive sense of the word, because it gets a bad rap for whatever reason. But anyways, I had this like I I love philosophy, so you know I've always obviously loved the thinker, and. But in reality, I'm just a, I'm a humble dude. I, I don't have like a, a doctorate in philosophy. I know what I don't know. And even what I don't know, I'm humble enough to admit that I don't know it. So I kind of added this. So I like to think a lot, but I don't know what the hell I'm talking about most of the time. Just, just brings a little humility to it. And um, then I, I wanted to, I wanted to like, disguise on my old tattoos not cover them up not laser them off but just kind of play off them so i got mario climbing up i had this i got this 15 years ago this rose and this wasn't all green before you can't even see the stem anymore but there's a stem right here and i and i found this random guy just walked into a tattoo parlor that i should not have and i told him what i wanted a simple mario climbing up there and he he effed it up for the most part i i don't like it the, the outer lines are too big. It's too big, first off. Anyways, I, I was upset. So I looked for another lady that can take the focus off this. I mean, I, I looked for another artist, and I, and I found Lindsay. I knew this old tattoo shop for, back in my hometown where I used to live 20 years ago, and I was visiting my sister. So I went into this tattoo shop. I said, is anybody available to give me a Mike Tyson tattoo? Because I wanted more Nintendo characters. I'm an 80s kid, and I loved Nintendo as a kid. My favorite game was Mike Tyson Punch Out. So I found Lindsay and she killed this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so once I saw how good she did, like I pretty much commissioned her to do the rest. And then so I got um, Excite Bike. Um, I, okay. got, I got um, Mega Man. Okay. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 this way. There. Okay, and, yeah, I got it. And, and all the filler spots, I have Tetris pieces. Like, all the blank spots. Right there, you were right so there. pissed off at me because I didn't know Mike. what Mike Tyson punch out, right? I never no, played that No, it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me. It was your viewers. <laughs> you embarrassed me. Oh, I, mean, I was too, but I was more embarrassed for you. You were embarrassed for me. Oh, poor me, poor me. <laughs> what, what 80s kid, what 80s kid never even heard of, heard of, what was it? What was it? It was the Bo Jackson, right? Never heard of yeah, Technobol. Yeah, yeah. okay. Technobol, Technobol. I don't the, even know what that is. The two, the two people, <laughs> the two 80s kids that did not know 
what ten was were either, and I don't think this was you, um, which I would never make fun of. Is how I, the reason why I laugh because I know this wasn't you. Are the are the the ones in poverty that that never had it, didn't even have friends that had money that had a Nintendo, or the dorks, the geeks, the 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 uncool kids. <laughs> <laughs> No, te- Why, you know, Tecmo, I'm just I'm just giving you crap. But Tecmo Bowl was like <sighs> the 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 quiz and central '80s ten and under kid game. If you like sports, mm. if you're like a, if you're like a, an athlete kid, then Tecmo Bowl was it was because Tecmo Bowl was the first football game that you were that you had real NFL players' names. And that was huge. All right, why is there no Jayo Tats? That's that's a real question here. Come on now. I'm Are you only, representing or what? I'm only 41. I'm only 41. <laughs> Annie actually brought that yeah. up to me. She's like, why is why is Matt not representing Jayo? I don't understand. I'm like, listen, man, he's all about, he's not a brand. He's like, he got no Nike tattoo. He doesn't have to have a Jayo tattoo, you know? Anyways, maybe maybe we can, when we meet, so, you know what would be funny is we go and we both get yeah. uh, Jayo tats that together would. next time some, we hang out. That would some, be cool. Yeah. Some, some, My some first like, tattoo ever. Yeah. That would that would <laughs> that'd be good. And we got we'd have that to do it somewhere cool. epic. Yeah, we have to do somewhere cool, somewhere epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that'd I mean, game. our plan, our plan was actually to, I mean, before COVID, um, at at Chinese New Year, I was supposed to go home to see Eva and Annie, and, and afterwards, I was supposed to either go to Myanmar, and we were going to do the ballooning over. Where was that? Um, What's it called? I don't remember. Burma. It's a it's a beautiful. No, it's like the most. The it's like the most uh, iconic uh, ballooning that you could like... ever do. It's yeah yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's uh, uh help me in the comment section. It's it's in uh, in Bagan? Myanmar the most. Bagan. Bagan. B-A- Bagan. Bagan. Yeah. B A. Yeah yeah. <clears throat> and uh, we were supposed to go do Bagan ballooning, which is on your bucket list and my bucket list. Yep. So that would be great. And then uh, we were supposed to go to. Um, uh, I was going to go to Bali and 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 do my uh, scuba dive, diving. Uh, dive master. Which, which dive master, master diver. Dive master. <laughs> same thing, right? Same no, thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> not the same thing in, at all. In, in Gilly, Gilly, Jilly, Jilly, Gilly. Two things that piss Matt off. Mm-hmm. I just did in in sequence, you know, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyways anyways um yeah yeah so you know what i i we're losing a few viewers but i want to show one more th- I, I maybe the tattoo thing is a bit too off topic for for travel but um can can we see the the ch- the, the chest tattoo and and a little bit because that's pretty badass look at that thing guys <laughs> that's pretty awesome <laughs> it's king cuts Pendant is burial pendant. Yeah, and it goes, yeah, it goes is, all the way up there. Yeah, that is pretty badass. And how much more work you have to it before it's finished? Uh, about another five hours, six hours. Nice, nice. That for for those for those of you that are wondering why he didn't do yesterday's uh, or last week's live stream, it was because he had to go and get uh, get tattoo work done. So um, we could tell his priorities. Are are much more aligned with tattoos than going on the Jio Travel Show. <laughs> joking, joking. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, geez, maybe you guys can offer me some suggestions on where to put the uh, Jio. I'm thinking, where where would I? I don't want to. I'm not a tattoo guy, but I wouldn't mind having maybe something inconspicuous that can be covered up. But you know, I, I'm not going to put Jio on my forehead like. Uh, like uh, what's that, uh, Doctor Manhattan? You know, that would be pretty cool, right? A Doctor Manhattan style, the Jio tattoo right in the center. Can you hear me, okay, Matt? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. okay. Are you asking me where you should put it? No, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, sort of asking, but uh, I mean, that's, you have to figure that out. That's, that's not something you can just come off the top of your head. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, Patrick out there, Patrick, you you have a tattoo. You have a Jio tattoo. Uh, he's a, he's been a fan of Jayo for a very long time. I consider him uh, extended family, and uh, he is branded himself with. I, well, I don't like to use that word, but he has uh, emblazoned himself with the Jayo logo, which is which is pretty cool. Anyways, 
Let's get back to the uh, topic of travel at hand because you actually have uh, a lot going on there. And we've had a bunch of people asking about the caving adventure because that has been uh, after you came to China, then we, you came to Nepal, got sick, almost died. If you guys are just joining us, uh, this is my buddy, Matt. And there's, those are some interesting stories. In the comments section or uh, in the description of the video below, you have links to the Mount Everest uh, series of videos I produced and also what we're about to talk about right now, which is the Sondong Cave expedition that uh, <clears throat> we went on. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Sondong Cave is the largest cave in the world. It's in the jungles of Vietnam. And uh, Matt has had this uh, on his bucket list and uh, you, you told me about it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it became part of my bucket list. Simply, uh, you just pretty much had to show me about it. And I was like, holy shit, I've got to add this to to my adventure because it's just so, so epic. Um, do you want to you want to describe to everybody kind of what the what the Sondong expedition is and and what it was, what it entailed? Um, we're starting at what point? Um, well, we arrived in uh it, well, we started in Laos, then we took a, a overnight bus to yeah. um that to Vietnam. Yeah. That was eventually all in itself. Sh like, that was that was an adventure. Like, we could buy we could probably do like what we could easily do a half an hour to an hour just on the trip to get there. <laughs> That's right, yeah. man. Sleeping sleeping in the uh border passing between Laos and Vietnam. And yeah, and you I, just, that was cool. And I got sleeping see, on rocks. <laughs> right. And I like I got to see how you actually did the behind the scenes stuff with your with your trike like taking it apart and putting it under buses because things little things like that people don't don't they'll probably either they thought about it and they just brush it off or they haven't even thought about all the times where you're not on video biking oh yeah like i got like taking it apart and having like all that some of it's a hassle but it's just it was cool to see how it all went down uh, how you actually traveled with that thing would would this be a form of travel that you would like to adopt? <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's not. It's 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 only because it's not. I love the freedom aspect, and yeah, yeah. The more the more physical things you have with you, you know, obviously the less options you're gonna have to where you can go and when, and so that's why I'm just a small backpack and you know t-shirt type of traveler. <sighs> Hello, uh, Afkarak uh, from Iraq. Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, that was an epic trip from Misty. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, yes, it was. And uh, like, like, uh, like we're saying, like the trip started um, long before the trip. You know, it started in Vang Vang Vien, and it and it even continued from Vang Vien um, after uh, the cave trip we we did some cycling together too you yeah, know so like week, yeah. yeah yeah and you had that uh, for those of you that see this picture this is uh matt on my trike the tiger duck and then he, he had the he had the um mountain bike which uh was very comfortable from what you've said right it was ex extremely comfortable and uh, a very um, very right. chill yeah. ride for you so like if you <laughs> rode around the block or something it'd be fine but not for <laughs> How many kilometers is that? How many kilometers did we ride? About 500 kilometers? I was about I think to say we that. Had... I think it was about 500. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It was good. Actually, um, you know what's funny is I have a bunch of friends that don't cycle very much that want to go to Chengdu and do a cycle tour um, for for a, uh, about a week, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And they're like, let's just let's just wing it, you know. Let's just uh, and I'm like, well, maybe we should do an organized tour because at least it'll take us to places that are specifically interesting and they'll take the weight off of the like you wouldn't have to worry about carrying anything on your bike everything would be ported ordered for you you know and uh, because it's part of that is because i remember the experience that we had and i was thinking i, I don't want to deal with um or or i don't not deal with but i i don't wanna have to worry about people that might not have the physical bodies to ride for an extended period of time like yeah. i normally do and maybe making it a little bit easier could make the journey a little bit more exciting for them and uh, and less painful because <laughs> because you had some painful days, right? Yeah, it was but it was mainly my back. 
I was most yeah. of my because the way my body was hunched over and my shoulder is my shoulders and my upper back. Yeah, that, that was. A I mean, we, we we traded and and you you're shorter than me, so mm. when you rode the trike, it was a little bit difficult was, to yeah. get your. You had to sit way way down it? in that seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a pretty comfortable ride, right? What did you yeah. think of the trike? No, I think yeah. If, if I was taller and I had more, you know, practice on it, it, it would be a very convenient way to get around. But like I said, it's yeah. just too, it, 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 it's, it's too stifling as far as where I can go and what I can do. All right. Back, back to the cave. So, um, basically let me just summarize. So we, we, we arrived in Vietnam, we reported to, um, uh, Phong Nha, right? Wasn't that Phong Nha was the area of the, of the, the cave where, where, um, Oxalis headquarters was, uh, sure. right. Fona. And, uh, and then from there, yeah. And from there we took uh, a bus to, into the jungle, um, and then trekked through the jungle, which was an amazing trip there. Cause we went through the, uh, the, um, what was that? That was the first cave was, um, that one with the, uh, cave of the swallows. Yeah. Um, hang, Hang, hung in, hung hang, in. Yeah, 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 hung yeah. In, yeah. And the, and right here, when you're looking at the picture, uh, is Matt. He's sitting up on this, like basically, it's a rubble pile, but it's a huge rubble pile at the opening of of this uh, cave of swallows. And you're looking down into our camp, which was that was it, eh? That was our first time, kind of getting an idea that this is going to be life for the next next few days, portering through from from cave campsite to cave campsite i mean those those campsites <laughs> they got better and better which i didn't think how they could be how, that the first campsite was if it would have ended there it would have been great it wouldn't have been worth yeah. the money yeah but, but I, w I wouldn't have been like that's it because that that was awesome just that one spot i mean uh it's called cave of swallows because no it's not every cave evening of yeah cave that of was swallows. a cave of swallows Cave Hung in was a cave, but that's cave of swallows. But cave of swallows is the actual thing in in Nicaragua, right? Or South this America is somewhere. Also called this is what you see on National Geographic when they show the cave and the millions of swallows flying in and out. Um, oh, I don't that, think I saw that. Yeah, right. no, no, a hundred percent sure. Um, there, there are the, the there is the cave of swallows that I want to do the skydive into. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. you're talking about in Mexico. That's yeah. the base well, jumping. The um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's like a, a sinkhole cave, you know. Um, but this is also, I'm probably probably a few caves in different countries that are have that same moniker, the cave of swallows. But uh, in this case, it's because the swallows nest inside the cave, and so they fly in um, every uh, every evening, and then they fly out every morning. And man, oh man, that the sound in that cave and not only are all the birds and the bats there but their sounds are ricocheting off everything you know it's it's pretty wild i mean the sound there the sounds. acoustics yeah 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 and uh so uh from from that day forward we we were portering into and out of i mean when you said that you thought that day would have been enough to satisfy and that was an experience a fairly expensive adventure to take. It was around three thousand U.S. dollars mm -hmm. to go and do this adventure, and uh, we were like, "Wow!" Just the trek through the jungle to Hang An Cave was like, "This, this is pretty bad." If it's if it stays at this pace, yeah, at yeah. this like level of of excitement, this is this is great. But it 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 uh, sort of disappointed that. In uh, epic fashion, in epic fashion, because every day was uh, like upping the level and upping the level. I mean, what was your favorite campsite? Was 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 that, that your favorite that campsite? Yeah, the favorite spot obviously was where we have all those epic, you know, you know, photos and the, like that. That was the favorite spot. The campsite, yeah, was definitely that. This is the third. That one, yeah. That was, this one. This one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to get scale here because it's just so, so huge. Watch but the video. See, Watch the video. Yeah. The video, you, you get scale video. well on that one. Let me, uh, you know what, while we're, while we're talking about it, I'm going to share that in the comment section so that uh, people can link to it. Because I, I am, 
I loved that uh, that adventure, and I'm I, I think that I did a pretty good job of um, of sharing it um, and 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 making the video. I think we probably we might actually have I think probably the best. <laughs> I I mean you know I'm a little bit uh, uh, bias, but I think we probably had the best video uh, exploration of that of that cave ever. For sure, for sure, honestly, I yeah. Let's see here. Uh, we have a couple of super chats here. Let's see. Could you make a top 20 must visit list based on the places you've been, Matt? Would love to see that. Um, I love um, those questions. But first off, you, the thing about traveling, it's, it's, there's so many idiosyncrasies to each person. And it's so subjective. So when you say like favorite or, or must sees, what must see for me and what I think is favorite. Yeah. It it's become, subjective. So, so you gotta be a little more specific, like must sees in terms of, in terms of, you know, diving or in terms of hiking or in terms of food, in terms of culture, in terms of cities, so it'd be a little, a little more and I'll answer. You could make, um, you could probably make different lists for this, I've done the, that. You know what I mean? Like top 20 visits for, for that, those like, that those that like urban, you know, top 20 for those that you like camping, top 20 for those that like whatnot. It would be, uh, that would be more apropos, right? I did. I, I listed like my favorite um, small cities and I, I said, you know, I limited that like 10,000 population or less than I moved up to like a hundred. So I have, I have made lists like that. So I can answer those type of questions. Um, but like overall, what I think one place is awesome for, I would not want to go to for another. There's some places I don't ever want to go back to, but I do recommend people going. So you see what I mean? It's not, it's a hard question for me to answer. Mm, mm. John, thank you. This, this episode is lighthearted and, 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 and uh, peaceful. So <laughs> just, just sharing yeah. stuff. So, I, so you're always going to get that. that from me. You're always going to get lighthearted <laughs> and peaceful from me. Not always, but majority of the time. I'm I'm looking through some of the comments. Here's one that's funny. The pedal also fell off. Now this one yeah, obviously so I remember remembers. That. He remembers that. Yeah. That, that's a, yeah, that was a pedals. small detail. That was funny though. Yeah. <laughs> remember, you pulled off into a gas station. I'm like, we had just kind of gotten started, uh, yeah. and and you sort of pull off to the side. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And you're like, the pedal just fell off. <laughs> what like, what, was if like it, what if I didn't get that pedal back? What if it like went fell down some ravine or? Dude, I've been screwed. Well, the what ifs, the what ifs, you know, yeah. they'll always get it, you. It worked out. It worked out. Can tricycles climb? Well, can tricycles climb? Yeah, they can, right? Yeah, yeah. difficult. I mean, my legs were. They're long, a little harder so, than a bike, yeah. right? Yeah, just well. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Your legs were toast, says Michael. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, do you have any toe tats? I don't, but I do have a foot tat. I have. This is the logo from the dive shop I worked at. Yeah. Cool. Screw whatever. That's my only they, tip. And but how also, much money do how much money have, do you get every time you show that? Yeah. <laughs> how many how many free dives and do you get every time you show that? Jacques I'm joking, Cousteau. Joking. <laughs> and Jacques Cousteau. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that tattoo. Indiana Jones. Okay. Now go on. What else? <laughs> uh let's see here um were you guys hiking with the original founder of the cave asked michael we did meet the original guy that discovered it right it was the guy in that village do you remember yeah. we actually met the guy who uh or i think he originally report i i think that locals knew of that cave for quite some time but uh it was just a place for them to it take was, refuge no, no i remember this hunting um, no, what it was is back in the 70s, there was a, a young, at the time he was like late teens, early 20s. He was in, that whole area, first off, is where they go to get to scrounge for wood, the locals. Like majority of it was wood that they went scrounging for to build things and yada, yada. Well, at this particular day, this farmer, this local went a little bit further, or well, actually a lot further into the jungle than before because they had pretty much scoured scavenged all the all the good wood in the area well he got right it started storming like it started raining really bad 
and he couldn't he couldn't get back but he found this the entrance into this cave to take shelter and mm-hmm. he saw like he remember he heard like he heard like a, a river wind. running through it yeah, and river. wind yeah. and everything and he came back and it was a treacherous to the to, i mean when i say he went back i mean there's a reason why no one even went to this place until the 70s because it's not the easiest to get to anyway so he came back and he was like telling all the lo- this is 70s and back then there was remember he said there was like only a couple hundred you know was, was the population so and over the, over 20 30 years you know a myth grows and it becomes this oh mm-hmm. is there a cave is it not a cave so only one person knows of it at this point but there's just been like this mythical story and some professional um spelunkers cave dwellers whatever you want to call them in england they um they heard about these caves and there's a lot of caves in vietnam so one of them went to go search for for these hidden caves and while he was in vietnam and this is in 80s mid 80s he heard you know just at the, like local bar he overheard someone say about this cave blah 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 you know one of those romanticized stories mm-hmm. and he asked he asked well can you show me i'm a professional you know caver from new england and i'll have i have i can i can pay you and the guy obviously didn't he he didn't want to turn down the money but he didn't know exactly where it was but he so he tried so he put he took the team from england on um, this is in the late 80s uh he took the team from england or early 90s i should say at this point um and they remember they searched for like a month and they didn't find anything so they gave up so they went back to they ran out of money they went back to england and the local was so disheartened that he couldn't find it he went back searching for the next few months till he found till he finally found it again then he finally found it again for the second time and called the people from england and then the rest is history wow I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> you you dropped some thought. knowledge on me. You dropped some knowledge. Hey, uh, you know what? We have an argument going on uh, with with regards to you uh, in the comments section. So remember that. I mean, obviously, somebody says, "Could you make a top twenty must visit places?" Uh-huh. And um, then um, then EE says, uh, "Well, because you said." I couldn't answer that. And she's, uh, EE is saying, uh, she obviously is okay with Matt's number one objectiveness and what you think would be your top 20. And, 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 and so she uh, actually gave me an, uh, another, she okay. gave me another super chat and said, uh, both of your top 20 sites, uh, seeing, I think 20 is a, a big number, yeah. but, uh, are we talking um, about, are we talking about sites? Are we talking about cities or cause that's too. Well, things. I, well, uh, and then the last one, you're never going to get an answer from Matt number two. He strives to seem uh, mysterious and convoluted. No. <laughs> and no, then, uh, just... I'm curious, though. And then the other one's like, yeah, I'm curious, too. Everybody's have... curious. No, no, no. But here's the thing. I have, I love talking about it. I'll answer anything. It's just these questions can't be, they can't be so vague. I, they need to be a little more specific. Be- because I've been so many places that, it's hard for me to answer that question, especially if I don't know the person asking me the question. I don't know what. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna say places. I'm gonna we're gonna put up a picture, and then you're gonna say uh, how this ranks on your whole Got it. adventure. Perfect. I like that. Okay, Perfect. okay, Perfect. is that good? Okay, yeah, so yeah, first, I just need some leeway. Just give me some leeway. Yeah, yeah. So first, we're gonna do this one. All right, and when that was my second time in Egypt. This is in this is in 2014. My second time in Egypt. This is a funny, uh, it's, a funny it's a good story because I was flying from, from, uh, we were in, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? I was in Spain. We were in Spain and we were, we were trying to decide where to go. No, no, no. I take that back. We're in, we're in Morocco and we didn't know what, which direction to go from there. My friend, I wanted to go to Petra. He wanted to go to, to Europe, to, to Auschwitz. And I wanted to go there too, but I, but I really wanted to go to Petra. So he, we found this flight to Petra that had a 24 hour layover in, in Cairo. So this is that 24 hour layover. So we just, we flew actually to, to, to Amman in Jordan, but this is just, this is just a simple 24 hour layover. Okay. Okay. I'm going to listen. We're going to rifle through these things. One to 10, 
10 being the, the best, one being the worst experience if you're going to go travel yeah, in your, in your okay. personal. That, that ranks probably, well, just without thinking too much, I'm going to say that's going to probably be seven for me. Between five and seven. seven. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do this again. Okay. How about this one? That's, that's two. That's Maybe two. one. Maybe one. One is the worst. Oh, worst? I thought best. No, no. Ten is top ten. Ten, ten. Oh, ten I, is I, the I, best. Oh, I thought you mean. I thought I was like ranking my my favorite. Okay, okay, top ten. Okay, I see where we're going. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, um, that is a ten for sure. Then, then, or maybe a nine point nine. Ooh. Okay. What is this? Can you I tell us it. what this is? That's Antarctica. Okay. That is when I was camping. What I'm doing right there is we have to dig a. We had to dig a hole to put our sleeping bag in and sleep, so the so the um, the wind won't. Well, the blow over us instead of onto us. So we had to like block ourselves from the cold wind by digging a ditch and sleeping in the ditch. And was it one night? How many nights did you Just spend night. on the ice? Just, Just one, one night. night. On the, I was on the, the boat on the ship for 13, no, 14 nights and on the land for one night. So um, this is this is one of the top. This is like way yeah. up there. And, th and that is one of those things where where... It's not just it's not just bragging rights that to, to say that I went to Antarctica. It is the most awe-inspiring visual thing I've ever even seen in my life. I, and I, when I say thing, I mean a monument, uh, anything by nature, anything. The most this can't be reality moment was Antarctica. How difficult was it to get there, and how expensive was it? Uh, I'm just gonna say from my experience, I know it's a lot more expensive. I this was in 2013, Christmas, Christmas of 2013, so going into 2014. Um, I I actually flew down to Ushuaia, which is the southernmost city in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Um, and instead of if you go online and you, you you'll the cheapest you're gonna find is maybe like seven eight thousand dollars for like ten days. The shortest amount of time is ten days because it takes mm -hmm. takes three to get there and three to get back. Um, yeah. so you're at, you're at sea for five or six days. So, uh, I, I had the, I had the privilege and, um, the opportunity to, to be able to wait out since I was traveling the world at the time, I didn't have to get back anywhere. So anyone that wants to do this seriously, I recommend, unless you have a lot of loads of money, um, don't book it online, fly to Ushuaia cause you have, you have to leave from there anyway. So it's not like you're taking an extra trip. Just wait till you go to Ushuaia, because that's where, by the way, Ushuaia is where I think 80% of the, the, the ships leave, um, go to Antarctica, is from Ushuaia. Yeah. A couple go to, a couple leave from other, from Chile somewhere, and they, I think Australia, but that's Ushuaia. And there's like, obviously there's travel agencies everywhere. You can go, to, you can literally go to the docks and try to like finagle your way on. But oh, okay. I, but I paid, they... They online they wanted eighty five hundred for 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 fifteen days over Christmas in Antarctica. I went down there. I went to a few shops. I found someone that that negotiated that eighty five hundred dollars down to fifty five hundred dollars plus a five hundred. Because the only thing just first off, the only thing to spend money on on the ship is alcohol. So I basically got free alcohol for the whole time because they gave me a five hundred dollar bar tab. And five hundred and fifty dollars cash for two weeks in Antarctica. Wow, it's a bit it's a bit expensive, you know. Oh but. yeah, but it's it's a, it's it is one of the things that I will say without question, it's worth the money. Now, if you only have that much money, it don't obviously, but it's not going to be one of those things where you're going to say you didn't get. You're going to feel for. regret, right? Yeah. You're not going to feel regret. You may feel regret that you spent it instead of buying something else that you could have bought with it, but it itself is worth the money. Son Dong was no regret too, eh? No. Those, and those are the, those are the two most expensive one things I did. Like I just put one, one, one payment was yeah. 3000 for that and 5,500 for Antarctica. And both of those yeah. are my, are my top two things that I, I say. So it's worth the money. I've yeah. done things that were only like $500 that were in my eyes worth $20. That was cool. What so, is this? That was um, Devil's Pool. 
in the off the Zambezi River in Zambia and Zimbabwe. You have you know Zambia and Zimbabwe in Africa, and you have the Zambezi River, the which which separates it. And what this is the it's the largest waterfall in the world in terms of volume of water. So this is low season though. So <clears throat> you can't you can't go to where I'm going. This is <clears throat> Devil's Pool section. You can't go there during high season because there's too much water. So from from September to December, I believe, or November. No, no, I'm actually that all the way up until February. For those like four or five months, um, the water is receded enough where you can go to here. But when it's full on flooding, it's the most voluminous waterfall in the world. Um, and how this far down? How far down over that edge? Like how far down oh, is that waterfall? You can't see it. You can't see the bottom. First off, because yeah. obviously because of the splash. But what happened? I don't know if you. There's a video. If you put a, if you put a photo of it on there where I'm hanging off. What he does yeah. is you go and you hang off and you look down. And this guy, the only, the only safety precaution on this whole area, like there's no rails. There's no, there's <laughs> nothing. The only thing is you, you literally, there's a picture of me. I don't know if Matt's going to put it up there where I'm like hanging off and you don't see my legs, but he's actually holding my ankle. He's like off to the side and he's holding my ankle, but I'm like dangling off. It's scary. Really scary. But I, I had to do it. I'm well, scared of heights. So I'm scared of heights. Now's one of the other reasons why I did it. I had to do it. Bravo says uh, that he heard a story that one of the guides uh, went over the cliff and died trying to save a tourist. I believe, it. I believe that. I mean, yeah. I, I don't see how it can happen because I'm telling you, there is no man made safety barriers or precautions. All there is is, and that guy's new. They only, I think over the last few years, they, they meant like by law, they have to have a guy up there, but wow, yeah, there's no railing there's, and that's all, that's just flat, like flat rock, smooth, flat rock. So there's no, there's no ledges for you to hold on to. And it's probably got algae on it. Like it's almost yeah, sli there's it, algae. It's slippery. Yeah. It's not like that slippery, but there's definitely little uh -huh. spots of it. What about this? One to 10. Uh, Eight. Uh, eight, eight. And a, eight, eight and a half. I'm gonna go eight and a half on that one. Eight and a half. Yeah. Okay, now let's go down to the next picture. Um, see, this is more difficult to give because the Galapagos. The, I didn't do one single thing on the Galapagos that was a nine or ten necessarily, but the whole Galapagos experience was a nine. That makes sense. When when was it? Uh, that was this was in. In in July of 2016. And how Maybe long 17, was the tour 17, for? 2017. 2017. Um, how long was it? Well, it wasn't a tour. It was I I flew to I I flew to to Ecuador. I purchased um my first couple nights in I put my I purchased my ticket from Ecuador to Galapagos. And this is my first uh, first one or two nights there. And I stayed up, I ended up staying there for 10 days. And I did a, no, no, I take that back. I stayed there for two weeks. And I did one week live aboard slash naturalist cruise, which is not very many of. So, so I did, I did four, it was seven days. And I did four dive, four separate scuba dives. And all like the net, the, 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 naturalistic um parts of the tours like off land the iguanas and all the the uh, the talks about what you're seeing the science in the geography and history it was a good learning experience the whole mm. experience was was and there's nothing like you know they know they call the, they call the galapagos nature zoo so yeah 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 i mean the birthplace of the whole idea of evolution came from, from yeah i mean there's there's animals you're not going to find anywhere else on the planet so yeah one to ten so then um all together eight and a half nine just because i i i went i literally snorkeled with with penguins and turtles on the same dive so like i have to give it high for that Hey, hey, hey. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I mean, obviously, we've been talking a little bit about it, but Matt is a uh, avid scuba diver and, like, your passion. Yeah. I mean, that's fairly new, too, right? I mean, like, your passion for scuba diving. Yeah. I last did my, five my years? Scuba, six my years? My first scuba dive was in 2013. 
And then from 2017, I was an instructor on the Gilly Islands. Yeah. But I didn't even start until 2013. And then you're like, I really like this. Yeah, and, then came, and two years later, I was an instructor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jayo. Yeah. All right. What about this picture? This is the uh, salt student, flats, right? Yeah, uh, in Bolivia. Um, that The experience I would give a six, maybe five. A lot of salt. The salt is annoying. It was beautiful. The 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 photos obviously I got and it was it's such a unique thing to see you look out and it looks like you're walking on water so that it the the physical the feeling experience is better than I mean it's an it's it's annoying because there's so much salt and yeah it's it's not a pleasurable place to be but <laughs> but yeah. the photos come out amazing. And when you when you capture the visual in your mind and just close your eyes and capture it in there, you know once you leave, you're never going to be able to see that again. Like that is a cool experience. What's the altitude right now at that picture? You're way up there, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. This is this is outside of La Paz, which is the the highest or second highest um, elevation wise capital in the world. So I don't know exactly that someone might be able to let them know the number, but I know it's it's pretty high. It's up there. Yeah. What are those black? Uh, are those people right by your back? That no, you are, see? Because well, oh, that, that's a those are jeeps. Those are yeah. Oh, nice. okay, okay. And maybe that jeep and a couple of people. Yeah, outside. Yeah, people standing outside, outside the jeep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I thought maybe that was like a flagpole or or some some yeah. like a building. Um, the, just real quick, somebody's having trouble with the uh, super chats. Uh, the you don't. It's not necessary, but I appreciate it. I think sometimes it has to do with the VPN. If you're using a VPN, sometimes. Um, Matt, number two, is your ass still puckering from that waterfall? <laughs> like did, did, when you were sitting on the edge of that thing, were you like, uh, are you, no, you, you, was, was there well, any nervousness? Well, yes. When I was, when my head was digging off it, you don't like when you look to your right and you look to your. Le Try to find that photo if you have it. You can pull it. I, I don't. I I, I oh, can okay. find it, but it's going to take too long. There's a there's a picture of Matt where he's actually hanging. It's from his back and his back and his head is actually hanging over the thing. It's scary and, uh, because it's pretty epic. What makes it scary? You know that the only thing keeping you pretty much from well, if you let go, you're not going to like fall off because most of my body yeah. was still on the rock. But when you look to your left and look to your right, all you see is white because because the 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 white water from the from the crashing comes up, so, so you have water like hitting you in your face, and yeah, uh, and it's the the sound is just like complete, oh, so you don't hear anything. All yeah. you know is your head is hanging off of some rocks, and you like you know, all you see below you is death. So it's scary. Uh, that brings up a question: Have you ever did you skydive ever? No, I never did skydiving. So I, would you I, like to do that? I bungee jumped. Would you skydive with me sometime? That I would. would be I would. I'm not going to seek it out. Like it's not something. It's not a. It's not a bucket list thing for me. But if I'm pressured to do it with the right person, I'd do it. Oh, it's fun as hell, man! It's really, really cool. But you I do it in wanna, an awesome place. Yeah, I'd have to do it at an awesome place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So back, back here. The, the one to ten. You, you said this was a six point five. Well, you said no, no, a five or six, but. I'll, I'll say a six. I'll give a six, six. because okay. being there was being there was 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 pretty cool. But okay. all right, let's let's go to this picture. I don't. I don't uh, you don't know about this, this, do you? This. Yeah, yeah. What's this story? This was. I would rank this higher if if I know it wasn't organized. If this wasn't all <laughs> some sort of a farce in, in a way, in a way, because it was. This was just part of a like a a, a tour of the South African slums. The slum districts and in, in, in outside of Cape Town, and um, they took us to this. I mean, don't, the slums wasn't fake, so I don't want to take anything away from that. But, yeah. but I mean, it's not like I was the only white person to walk in there, and they offered me a bucket of of, of homemade beer. Okay. They ob that's homemade beer, but they probably were making it for for the tour for the for people the they bring in yeah. and shit like that. So I don't know how yeah. authentic it is. But I know, like the slum was real. Like that, I mean, that uh, these weren't actors, and yeah. and that was real homemade beer. I mean, and it tasted like real homemade beer. <laughs> <laughs> was that good or bad? It was. It was a really a frothy, like very very frothy, and it was 
extremely bitter, extremely bitter. So it wasn't bad, but you could tell that you didn't buy it. You didn't get it from a tap. One to 10. Uh, five, six, five. Okay. I'm going to go to one that I know you'll have a interesting opinion on. Um, what about this one? Uh, Pamplona that, that for, for, okay. The Pamplona, um, San Fermin festivities, San Fermin, I'm going to give a nine uh-huh. running, with, running with the bulls. I'm going to give a, cause they're two separate things. San Fermin is the whole week long, you know, festival. Uh-huh. The bull run yeah, this. is the morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll give that just for the, I'll probably give that a, a nine. nine. Yeah. The whole experience though. That was, a, that was a nine. The whole, the whole San Fermin and the running with the bull is a nine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, beyond the, the bulls, I mean, just the party. I mean, you've, you've mentioned this on many occasions, how much you enjoyed this, this experience. I did. And, it, was, uh, it was amazing. You can feel the energy from this picture. And, I mean, and, I, and, the, and, and what roar. made this what made this stand out as a, a from another festival or any any other kind of party type of, of atmosphere is that everyone felt, at least for me, felt more like so much like a team because look at everyone is wearing red and and white. So mm. so there is like no, I mean everyone is so friendly to everyone and everyone is there for a reason. And if you're wearing black and black and red like you know you're down to like party so it's just it's just like we feel more like a big team when everyone was in red mm. and white that's one of the reasons why i like that so much what about this one uh that i'll i will give i got lucky because it was, i went through rainy season and it didn't rain so the trails were almost empty i did the inca trail that was three four days and you can talk to a lot of people and you might actually hear more negative stories about it than positive but I say for me, it was an eight just because I got lucky with the rain. It wasn't crowded like it is for most people. Um, it was for me, it was just too, too touristy once I got there. Cause what, what happens is the people that actually take the Inca trail that do the four day hike, they get first dibs. So, so the gate, they let people in at sunrise. That the whole point is me once sunrise opens, then all the hikers who just spent three, two, three or four days hiking to get there are waiting at the sun gate. The sun rises and we, and we all go, you know, and we walk around. Then yeah. at 10 a.m., the, the, G- the geriatric bus comes up. And the, <laughs> okay. and the, and the, uh, and the, or, or the people who just didn't want to do the hiking or didn't have time to do the hiking or, or whatever reason. Um, so they just take the bikes. And at that point, it just becomes a Disneyland up there. So and that that is Machu Picchu, by the way. So yeah, that's asking, Machu Picchu. That much? Um, yeah. So I will give the hike an, an eight, and the actual Inca, the actual um, um, Inca Trail an eight. I'll give um, this. I can't my mind blank. I'll give this a seven, six and a half. Okay, who who took that picture? I don't know. Probably my tour guide. Okay, okay. Just had a question. Yeah. Uh, we have John who's talking about the running of the bulls as an, as an Arkansas hillbilly. I've never enjoyed running from a bull. Mm-hmm. And he says, I did have one of my ram sheep wipe me out. So, I mean, that was, yeah. How close were you to the bulls? Were you, were you no. able to touch them or? Oh, if I want. Yeah. But the whole point is to get away from them because this, because it's done on the strength of, of the old streets of Pamplona, the cobblestone yeah. streets. There's like, they're very, very, they're no cars, very, um, very small pathway so it's impossible to avoid it the way it works is it's nothing but ropes they have ropes separating um the the in group and the out group are the audience i should say so when, if you stand on if if you have the ropes right here on this side of the ropes is in the audience some of there's some parts that have like actual bleachers and some people just standing then on this side is all right, buddy, this is it. You're, you're, you're in the path of the bull and there, there's yeah. no, there's no paper you sign. There's no, there's, there's no, no liability. Yeah, 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 no thing. release. <laughs> there, there's not even a check-in. I'm not kidding you. Like if, if this is the rope, if this side is the, the audience and if this side is the bull run, all you do is dip your head and now, Oh no, never mind, never mind. 
you just change your mind like that. So you, it's very easy to, to be in it and get out. But the thing is, it, you have to pick your spot carefully because there's some mm. section, because it's not just one straight line. There's a couple turns, and some, and the people, there's the people that have been got killed. Majority of them were just stuck in it, like they had nowhere to go. They were trapped. The bulls sliding, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and Dude, the bulls, the bulls are sliding too, like yeah, yeah, and stuff, exactly. Right? And there's yeah, but but you also remember, there's also people that do this like professionally. Those are the ones. If you've ever if you've ever done it and you're watching this, you know those are the ones that have like they rolled up newspapers, and they are standing in front of the bulls, and they they you know they hit them with the bulls, and they're, they're like they're running, spring. They're the ones in front. They do this like as a sport. They they're locals. Yeah. And they they take it seriously, and they get mad when you're in their way. And it's like legit for them, but yeah. but if you're in their way, like they're not gonna. So you can get trampled on the people almost as dangerously as you by the bulls. So there's mm. a lot of danger to it. And which is why it's exciting. I'm not running from the bulls just because, oh, I want to say I ran with a bull. I want to run with the bulls in Pamplona. That's what I want. Yeah, the, that's the place. That's the, right. the yeah. heart of where it's so exactly. exciting. Real quick, uh, Karen, congratulations uh, you know, on being a grandma. That's very nice during the uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully very healthy and happy uh, little one. Uh, nice life. What an interesting year to enter the world, 2020. Jeez, what a crazy, crazy situation. Um, I heard they're limiting the amount of people going to Machu Picchu now. Uh, Mach Machine Picchu, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need to book way ahead and pay a big fee. You know, that's kind of funny. Like, I bet there's a bunch of things that we have done that you couldn't, you literally can't do again the same way. I think, like, maybe the Sondong Cave will probably be changing you know, uh, even when we went, there were more expeditions going there and more mm -hmm. frequently. And uh, the places that, you know, as the world sorts of sort of changes, I think that there's going to be a lot of places. Was there any place that you went that you don't think um, you could do the same thing uh, that you did? Like maybe even that waterfall in, in uh, the Victoria Falls, right? You can't. I, I Maybe they've restricted people hanging off the side of that thing or they will maybe no. eventually. Eh, maybe I don't. I don't think they will. I mean, that's that. That the Devil's Pool is such a huge draw. I mean, I got lucky where, like, it wasn't that crowded when I was there. But I can see, I can see that place, not being. Remember, it's the Devil's Pool is a small little. It's a pot. It's a. It's a, like a hot tub sized area of water. And to get there, you mm. have to. You have to traverse. You have to. You have to link arms with a few people and get to it. But if mm -hmm. there's a lot of people there, I can see them putting restrictions. I don't think they would stop it for safety reasons because it's too much of a draw. Mark. Yeah, yeah, especially in that country. They, what they about, would put uh, what, barriers. Go on. Uh, I was going to say, what about the, what about this guy? What about this place? Was, <laughs> this how is, is this ranking I, on your? <laughs> see, but I can't compare. It. This is a different experience. This is a fun. This is like every all those other ones. I were all by myself. Like here, I was with someone else with you, and this isn't a music more than anything. So. Experience wise, this is probably a nine, uh, eight and a half, nine for a travel experience. Just, but yeah, yeah, for, for the actual place, I would say a seven, six. Eight. That was, I mean, it was cool. I, I maybe, I five, mean, maybe that, six, that, that, that tram, that tram, that was the best part. forever. But I loved that, though. I loved <laughs> that. Forever. For those of you that don't know, that is a this is like it's like sort of like a tourist amusement park slash yeah, I don't know what it is Disneyland honestly. or some There's shit. No rides, I don't know. It's crazy. There's no rides. No rides. It's, it's weird. But you took this you took this tram up into the mountains, and it, like, how long was it? It was I think, like I think it was half, half an hour. hour. I think it was half an hour each way. Holy moly! And it just kept going and going and going. Eventually, you get to the the end. The, this is where you arrive. Is that building? with the canopy over it and the hand bridge there. And um, that's in Vietnam. It's outside of Da Nang, right? Mm -hmm. We were in Da Nang, right? Yeah. And uh, and we were trying to think of some things to do. And this was sort of like just the f the, the, the the Instagram spot that we were like, well, I guess we got to go there, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was in a storming rain. Oh, and, my God. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, if if you go and, and like pull up photos of that, it, it, unless it's someone like, did it specifically for that, and it was a private photo shoot. You're not going to find very many photos with nobody on the bridge, but it was it was storming, it was raining. Well, obviously now yeah. there's people, but there's a few of us, few photos, like the drone photo, Matt, of like us looking at, 
Like there's nobody on that the bridge. That was awesome. Because it, it just <laughs> it just stopped raining. And we're, we're not talking about a little bit of rain. We're talking yeah. about like a deluge of thunder and light. There was so much rain. The water was, was flowing into the, uh, the, the, yeah. whatever the, the, so the, loud. The, the, the tram center. It was so loud. <laughs> this is so crazy. And then as soon as it ended, I looked at Matt and Matt looked at me. We're like, let's get the. I didn't know if it was going to be that uh, allowed, you know, because there was people everywhere. Did, did they have no drone signs? No, that's it, right? They didn't uh, no, have no, no drone signs. They didn't have no drone signs. Yeah, that's why you so did we it. were like, no signs mean that it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun, man. That was fun. And Matt, you got uh, you got some amazing adventures, and uh, I think uh, I think we're about an hour and a half, which is a, a good time to kind of kind of wrap it up. Um, we could go on and on. If you guys really like uh, Matt and uh, you want to hear more, we could we could probably do chat with Matt episodes every so often and kind of yeah. shoot the shit, you know. That'd be fun. Give me something the, to do uh, in quarantine. I, there was a, there was a few questions actually I had. First of all, um, what do you what do you think you're going to do when this whole uh, virus thing abates? Um, well, initially, what in wasn't I didn't think it was gonna be as bad as it was. I was actually putting the wheels in motion to at least do some R and D in Costa Rica to actually potentially move there. So um I have my dog, which by the way, Tyson. I don't know where he is. Yeah, Tyson, come on. <laughs> Get Tyson uh, back here. Tyson, come on. He'll he'll come down here one sec. Uh, anyways, if it wasn't for him, I would be I would without hesitation move at least my at least my starting off point would be in Bali. I would move to Bali and figure it out from there. But because I have a dog, I can't bring him there, but I can bring him to Costa Rica. So I would be considering let me let me go get him. Yeah, yeah, go get Tyson. him. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matt's gonna go get Tyson. Uh, uh, shortened his name is Tyson, but it's actually Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he is just an adorable dog. Um, hey Tyson. Hi. What's going on, buddy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. those he he literally has puppy dog eyes. Like those eyes are puppy yeah, dog sure. eyes. Hi. <laughs> Can't see you. What happened to you? I I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Hey, Tyson. Tyson. Oh, good dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> or did you did you pull your? I think he pulled his earphones oh, out. Oh. Okay, I can, I can hear you. What are you saying? Okay, so he's uh um how how trained is 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 Tyson? Is he doing okay or is yeah, he, he is. excited? Yeah, he can sit. He can roll over. He can do all the basic dog tricks. Oh. Is how old is how old he? I mean, I think this dog is going to be he, eternally a puppy. No, like he is. He, he's uh, he, He's 20 pounds, and he's been 20 pounds since he was eight months old. And he's four. Wow. Well, he, he's, he'll Wait. turn four soon. Huh. Huh. What kind of a dog uh, is that? What he's is a it? Border, it's border a border collie poodle. Border collie poodle. But he was the runt of the he's the runt of the litter. I think the runt is good. Like yeah, no, I agree. that dog would that dog would work here at this house because Annie wants to get a dog, but that would be the biggest I'd want a dog to get. You know, yeah, and he's per he's <laughs> the perfect size for a plane. I can take him on planes because he's twenty pounds. So cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. <sighs> so, um, you know what? I had a question for you, but. Maybe we just end it now. the 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 question I was going to ask, and and we'll just leave it on this because uh, if if you guys want the answer to this question, we could we could actually have an entire episode based on something like this. If uh, if the twenty year old Matt met the current you, what would he say, um, and what would the conversation be? I think that's a very interesting thought experiment, um. right? It would depend on who's who's doing the asking. Yeah. No, you're 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 sitting there and you're oh, talking me. to you're uh, talking to yourself, honestly, but the twenty year old I, self. I, honestly, I would say, like, 
only because I, I know how it, it turns out. I would say keep doing what you're doing, but there's no one thing. You don't know shit. You don't know anything that you even think you do. You have a good head on your shoulders, so just listen to, you know, the way you were, you were brought up. And, right, I, I, know, I, I know me 20, and I had a good head on my shoulders, but I had no clue about the world. So I would just tell myself, stay humble, but just keep on going. Keep doing what you're doing. I made mistakes. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, but I made no mistake in my past that, that was detrimental to my future happiness. So, I mean, I would even argue that most of the mistakes you make led to who you are today. Exactly. I mean, like, it, it, exactly. You know, and like, they and were I, important. Right. And I didn't, no mistake I made was irreversible. So, can't really give my 20 year old much shit. All right, everybody. Matt is on Instagram. Uh, you can follow some of his picture adventures. Uh, right now, it's mostly tattoo stuff. Well, and Tyson. No, this, no, well, this is all my, I even, it's even written on my Instagram. My Instagram is tattoos, Tyson, and travel. T tattoos, Tyson, and travel. Yes. <laughs> and uh, if if you enjoyed this conversation, let me know. Maybe we'll do chats with Matt to fill in uh, episodes that uh, that I, that I haven't uh, had a guest for. I'd like to bring back this uh, uh, this travel show a little bit. I have uh, some guests that I could pull. I'd like to talk to Ed Pratt, who's unicycling, who had unicycled around the world, and I've already kind of set up some things with him. So maybe we'll talk to him, and uh, maybe someday. We'll be able to sit next to, next to each other and and do one of these uh, live uh, in some interesting part of the world, eh, Matt? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't you hang out there in the back for a second, Matt? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take you off. Uh, just just hang out. We'll talk after I go off. I'm just gonna sign off. Um, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I appreciate everybody on Facebook. Hello, everybody on YouTube. Hello. And uh, if I didn't get to your questions or comments, I apologize. We'll uh, try and do more of these. I do. Um, I, I, I get energy from talking to people who um, travel around the world and who are kind of living interesting lives. And I hope that I can transfer that energy onto you a little bit. Um, I have some really interesting episodes coming up this week. Uh, they are already uploaded. If you wanted to actually see episodes before they um, are public, you can go onto my Patreon. And uh, I actually have a little thing here that I can show you. Um, you can go onto my Patreon and uh, uh, you can see videos before um, the public sees them. And you can comment on them. And I, uh, I have really started putting them on ad free so that you don't even have to um, worry about watching advertisements through those videos. I figure if you're a Patreon, uh, you have uh, contributed to the journey. And so that's kind of uh, a nice thing that I can give to you. I also do a uh, a frequent, I won't say daily, but frequent audio podcast that is exclusive to Patreon. So if you guys are interested in that, you can go there as well. Um, obviously, during this period of time where I'm not actually actively traveling, um, some of the conversations get a little bit political, but um, if that's okay for you, you can do that and listen. Um, if uh, if you just want to watch as well. That's that's fine to do also. So uh, thank you so much. We will talk to you later. I have, a, a, like I said, a bunch of cool stuff. We have a cycle tour coming up in Chengdu in October. Um, I've got uh, a, a, an intent to actually deliver all of my uh, cycling videos that you haven't seen. There's a dozen videos that you have not seen of my ride from the bottom of Thailand into the top of Malaysia, all the way to Kuala Lumpur that I stopped delivering because COVID came and I was behind and I just wanted to make my COVID videos. So, um, because it was timely and we're living in a weird, interesting time where you got to stay current. But now that that situation has sort of, um, leveled off, I guess, um, I, I can go back and start bringing you up to, uh, up to par. So real quick, um, EE, -E, thank you very much, guys. Uh, uh, guys, and uh, uh, thank you to Matt. So it was very fun and informative. John, thanks for an interesting stream. Uh, Mick, Mick, thank you for listening. Uh, Eve, thank you for this. Uh, very fun conversation. It was a very fun conversation between me and Matt. Um, and there's an interesting conversation in the back end between Eve and EE. -E. I'd rather not 
listen to you talking politics. Uh, well, whatever. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand that take. Uh, thanks, Matt. This conversation is really inspiring. Hey, Mexicanos. You, I mean, I want to come and see you. We've just been talking. If you want to, if you want a Spanish channel of somebody living in China, um, check out uh, Mexicanos in in China. Um, it's it's very interesting. You got some really cool videos and we've been talking. So thank you very much, Jayo. Have a good one. And uh, we will catch you in the next one. And uh, stay safe uh, and be smart. And we'll talk to you later.